Hello everyone we are going to discuss about the subject internet of things in this today we are going to learn about the IEEE standard 802.11 AH which is referred as Wi-Fi Hello myself Divya working as assistant professor in the department of computer science and engineering SRKR engineering college Premavaram the objectives of this lecture are to learn about IEEE 802.11 AH standard and to know various layers of IEEE 802.11 AH standard and to gain some knowledge on how the security is provided by this standard. The purpose of using this standard is the IEEE 802.11 AH is a wireless networking protocol which was published in 2017 which was referred as HALO. As we say HALO, it is HALO, H-A-L-O-W and it is pronounced as HALO, H-E-Y-L-O-W. It uses 900 MHz license exempt bands or to provide extended range Wi-Fi networks compared to conventional Wi-Fi networks operating in 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands, ISM bands. It also benefits from lower energy consumption allowing the creation of large groups of stations or sensors that cooperate to share signals supporting the concept of Internet of Things. The range of this standard is up to 1 km with 100 bits per second data rate. This standard is a key IoT wireless technology either for connecting endpoints such as for computing nodes, high data rate sensors and video or audio analytics, uh, the devices and for deploying Wi-Fi black hole infrastructure such as outdoor Wi-Fi mesh uh, networks in smart cities, oil and mining and some other environments. The three main use cases identified in this standard are sensors and meters covering a smart grid that is meter to pole or environmental or agricultural monitoring, industrial process sensors, indoor healthcare systems and fitness sensors, home and building automation sensors. Coming to the second one, black hole sensor and meter data. The black hole aggregation of industrial sensors and meter data that is potentially connecting IEEE 802.15.4G subnetworks. And the extended range Wi-Fi is the third use case for outdoor extended range hotspot or cellular traffic offloading when distances already covered by IEEE 802.11 A, B, G, N, A, C are not good enough for industrial Wi-Fi. So that is the use of IEEE 802.11 AH group. This standard does not include the white spaces uh, that is 700 MHz for 802.11 AF. Coming to this spectrum, if you observe, uh, as we have already discussed it, that it is using the sub giga H license, licenses that is below 1 giga H, 750 MHz to 1 giga H. In China, it is using uh, one range of frequencies in Europe, Japan, Korea, Singapore, US are using different spectrums from 750 mega that is 768 mega to 1 giga hedge below 1 giga hedge that is sub giga hedge so the physical layer IEEE 802.11 AH essentially provides an additional 802.0 physical layer operating in unlicensed sub giga hedge bands for example, various countries and regions use the following bands under IEEE 802.11 AH. So, as I have shown you, 779 to 787 MHz for China and 430 uh, and you can see here 916.5 uh, to 9. 27.5 MHz for Japan and 902 to 928 MHz for USA. So here 
the channels uh, the USA these channels can be used for 2, 4, 8 or 16 megahertz and also 1 megahertz for low bandwidth transmission. So if you observe in the diagram the green things are showing for 1 megahertz, uh, 2 megahertz, 4 megahertz, 8 megahertz and 16 megahertz means the available frequency they are dividing in the uh, like so 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. For example, at a data rate of 100 kbps, the outdoor transmission range for IEEE 802.11 AH is expected to be 0 0.62 miles. So coming to the uh, topology IEEE 802.11 AH is deployed as a star topology. It includes a simple hop relay transmission operation to exchange it range. If you see here in this diagram, we are having the wireless communication links and the wide communication links. You are having three areas. One is wide area, neighbor area and home area. In the neighbor area, you can see IEEE 802.11 AH access point, which is connecting data collector and control through the wide communication link and all the other devices, the distributor automation devices, uh, in the neighbor area and in the wide, uh, wide area and in the home area the water meters, the gas meters, power meters for home automation are connected through wireless communication link uh, for this access point. So if you observe this is like a star topology hub at the center and the devices as the edges. Simple hops for relaying communication to extend it range. So here this relay is not capped but the IEEE 802.11 AH task group worked on the assumption of two hops. It allows one 802.11 AH device to act as an intermediary and relay to another. In some ways this is similar to a mesh. So this star topology can also be extended as a mesh topology that if one device is getting the network access this can be used as a relay station for the other device and it is important to note that the clients and not the access point handle the relay function. This relay function can be combined with a higher transmission rate or modulation coding scheme. This means that a higher transmit rate is used by relay devices taking directly to the access point. The transmit rate reduces as you move further from the access point via the relay clients. This ensures an effect efficient system that limits transmission speeds at the edge of the relays so that communication close to the access points are not negatively affected. So the advantages of transmitting in the sub gigahertz uh, are the spectrum char characteristics will have a good propagation and penetra penetration and it covers large coverage area with one hop reach and the, we can also use relay nodes and it uses light licensing for support the spectrum. The reliability it increases reliability with less congested frequency bands, high sensitivity and link margin and it supports various frequency, time and space diversities. There will be a long battery life and short data transmissions for the fast data transmissions and uh, the battery power is also saved. These are the various advantages of transmitting in sub gigahertz band. Coming to the MAC layer, the IEEE 802.11 AH MAC layer is optimized to support the new sub gigahertz Wi-Fi physical layer while providing low power consumption and the ability to support a large number of devices or the endpoints. The enhanced end 
the features specified by IEEE 802.11ah for the Mac layer include the following. Those are it connects large number of devices per one access point and it is also supporting hierarchical association identifier AID. Hierarchical means in different levels we are going to connect like following the mesh topology with multi hop relays. So relays are used to allow connectivity outside the coverage area which is limited to two hops and power saving enhancement are there uh, that allows the stations to sleep and save the energy and the access point will negotiate with a target wake time for the individual station so that the stations can connect at that particular time only. Coming to the speed frame exchange as it is supporting uh, as it is supporting short data transmissions the stations can exchange a sequence of frames. So the enhancements and the features in this standard are it will have short headers, null data packets, speed packet exchange, improved channel access, grouping and sectorization, restricted access window raw and target wake up time are the enhancement and features of this standard. Coming to the null data packet support here it is extended to cover several control and management frames. Relevant information is concentrated in the physical header and the additional head overhead associated with decoding the MAC header and data payload is avoided. This change makes the control frame exchanges efficient and less, less power consuming for the receiving stations. So we have only the physical bits. Here acknowledgement frame is identified by modulation coding scheme and there is block acknowledgement uh, for the null data packets with other modulation coding schemes. Clear to send is some another null data packet with the new modulation coding scheme. Coming to restricted access window. It is a control algorithm that avoids simultaneous transmissions when many devices are present and provides fair access to the wireless network by providing more efficient access to the medium, additional power savings for battery powered devices and collisions are also reduced. So this is contention free period. Here the restricted access window will also transmit a TIM that is traffic indication map with every frame back on frame during restricted access window to transmit and receive the packets so that the stations can use this for the transmission without any contention. So access may be granted for transmission reception polling and for one or group of stations. A station can tell the access point that it has a frame to transmit using the uplink data link uplink data indication bit. So dividing the stations into groups and dividing time into slots for each group increases the efficiency when there is heavy load in the network. This is the use of restricted access window. Coming to the speed frame exchange. Ex uh, the frames can be exchanged very fastly with a short interframe sequence uh, that is it is also called as bi-directional transmit bi means in two directions the sender and the receiver can transmit the data here it is between the station and the access point if you observe in the diagram the station is sending the data and in the short interframe sequence it can get the acknowledgement so the receiver can send the acknowledgement send the data instead of acknowledgement within a short interframe sequence so frames are sent until there are no such frames coming to the target wake up time it reduces energy consumption by permitting an access point to define times when a device can access the network 
This allows devices to enter a low power state until their target wake up time arrives. It also reduces the probability of collisions in large cells with many clients. Speed, uh, see here in this diagram, the association request and responses are including the target wake up time, minimum wake up duration and wake up interval. So here the access point will sell the null data packet to a station uh, about its target wake up time containing the buffering status so that whenever the station knows the target wake up time at that particular time only it can poll and it can send and receive its frames. So here the target wake up time can also be large. If you observe in the diagram we are having 802.11 AH access point and there are two stations station 1 and station 2. So whenever the access point gets active it will send uh, that information to the stations so that the stations can sleep at a particular time and can wake up at the particular instance uh, when they receive the null data packet about the target wake up time and they can wake up and they can send the data so sleeping means they won't send any data they will wait for the target to wake up Whenever they know such information, then only they will send the information. You can observe in the diagram, initially the access point is wa uh, wake up, uh, station 1 is sending the data. When it is going to sleep state, the stations are also going to sleep state. When it is getting active in state, station 1 is sending data and in the after some interval, station 2 is sending the data. You can see the red things here. So, Whenever the access point is sleeping, the, all the others are also sleeping. So the target wake up time will increase the lifetime of the stations. Coming to the sectorization, here the sectorization is a technique that involves partitioning the coverage area into several sectors to get reduced contention within a certain sector. So this technique is useful for limiting collisions in cells that have many clients. This technique is also often necessary when the coverage area of 802.11 AH access points is large and interference from neighboring access points is problematic. So sectorization uses an antenna and beam forming techniques to partition the cell coverage area. You can see in this diagram here we are dividing into sectors and we are using some base stations access points for the sectorized beam for their connectivity. Coming to the security here the security is same as the standards IEEE 1901.2a, IEEE 802.15.4 and 15.4e. So coming to uh, the summary, this is designed for industrial Wi-Fi and it defines the over the air interface, the connectivity between the wireless client and the base station or between two wireless clients, it has the extended range making it useful for rural communication uh, so that decreasing the load on the cell phone tower traffic and it offers low rate 802.11 wireless stations to be used in the sub gigahertz spectrum. Thank you.